All right, people, we're talking full runners today. And I'm gonna show you a few common issues to look out for on these things if you're shopping for one, because despite these being one of the most dependable vehicles on the market, there are still some, some common problems with them that if you get caught with them, they can be pretty expensive to fix. So I'm gonna run you through some of the things to look out for if you're thinking about buying a fourth gen Toyota 4Runner. So for starters, as with any Toyota truck, rust is the number one killer of these things. And I would say probably the most common place to find rust on these is actually on the rear hatch. I don't know if Toyota used a different quality of metal on these or something, but they all rust back here. As you can see, moment of uh, vulnerability here. I got a pretty bad bubble on my hatch. And you also see it starts to rust in this trim piece here along the corners. That's another common spot to find it. Um, maybe up top where the, the wing mounts is another spot that they start to rust. And then also right down here I have a couple spots along the bottom of the tailgate. So that's probably the, the number one spot to find rust on one of these fourth gens. But um, another obviously super common area to look for is the undercarriage. If it's been driven in the salt belt anywhere, you're gonna have a rusty frame and rusty undercarriage. And it's worth mentioning guys, these forerunners, at least as of now, did not receive the frame recall that the, the Tundra and the Tacoma, and I think even the Sequoia got. That sucks. So as of right now, Toyota doesn't care if you got a rusty frame on your forerunner, they're only gonna fix it on the, on the pickup trucks. Now, a little birdie told me that there might be a class action lawsuit coming soon for the forerunners, so definitely pay attention to that if you have a rusty frame on yours. So but uh, one of the first places to look for on the undercarriage is this skid plate here for the gas tank. I've found, at least on mine, that tends to get rusty before any of the other spots. Um, the rest of mine is pretty decent. I've had it oil sprayed and everything, but I think because the, the front wheels kind of kick up contaminants towards this and, and beat it down with rocks and pebbles and stuff, that seems to be the first place to find rust on them. The rocker panels here are obviously another place that you really want to pay attention to as well. Again, I think it comes back to just the, the way that they get pelted with debris from the, the tires. It'll chip away at it and uh, you might be able to find rust on there or in the door frames or something, so keep an eye on that. So another big one that you guys are going to want to watch out for on these four-wheel drive models is the obviously the four-wheel drive actuator. And these Toyotas have electronic four-wheel drive, right? It's just a switch. and that actuator within the transfer case, if it seizes up, it can be a very expensive fix. That means you have to tear apart the transfer case and have it rebuilt in order to get at it. And you don't want to deal with that. So as long as you use these four wheel drive systems once a month, it's fine. It'll never be a problem. But if the previous owner didn't stay on top of that, it's a very good possibility that that might be seized up and you won't be able to get yours into four high or four low. As far as knowing how to engage it and how to use this system, I already have a video on that. Feel free to check that out on the channel. Just showing you how to engage four wheel drive, four low, the center diff lock and all that stuff. So you definitely want to make sure that your four wheel drive engages. So start it up and shift it between each setting. This is a V8, so they only have a four low option on top of the, the full time all wheel drive. So this just has two settings, but make sure they both engage and you don't have a flashing light in the dash when you try to engage. It should be on solid if you test it out. Now, a very common problem with these V8 4Runners are cracked exhaust manifolds. It happens to pretty much all of them at some point in their life. The metal on the exhaust manifold is just a little bit too thin. They had to make it this way to heat the cats up for emissions purposes, but then unfortunately they sacrificed reliability in order to do that. And the way to tell that you have cracked exhaust manifolds, there's no visual inspection or anything. It's a ticking noise that you'll hear, especially when you start it up. And if you hear like a loud ticking noise when you first start up, the engine is cold and then it goes away when it's warm, that's more than likely a cracked exhaust manifold. So on this one, I actually upgraded to Doug Thorley headers because they're stainless steel, lifetime warranty and everything. And I never have to worry about that problem again. But that's a very expensive fix if you need to deal with that. Now the V6 models didn't have to deal with that. You don't have to worry about that with them, but the early ones at least, I believe 05 and earlier did have some head gasket issues. You wanna keep an eye out for that. So both engines do have kind of one main issue that could pop up. And both of those are definitely worth looking into because they'll, they'll cost you big bucks to fix. Another issue with these V8 models is the air injection pump. And that's a part of the emission system. 
and if it goes bad it's basically like a flap that if it gets stuck either open or stuck closed it'll throw a check engine light it'll throw a code and it'll also put it in limp mode and it can be very expensive to get that fixed at the dealership if you choose to do that and the good news is there's a there are bypass kits that you can buy from aftermarket companies that just disable the whole system and uh, that would be my fix if, if that were to happen on mine. Mine seems to be holding up okay, but that's definitely something to check for. Now, speaking of check engine lights, you're going to want to check the dash for any warning lights and you're going to want to scan it for any diagnostic trouble codes that could be causing a check engine light or your VSC light on or your traction control light on. It's very important that you scan this truck for codes before you buy it. A really easy way that you can do this is with this fixed sensor. And what this is, is it's a just a little sensor that plugs into your OBD2 port and it essentially connects the truck and its diagnostic system to your phone. You download the app on your phone and it connects the two together with Bluetooth. And essentially you can, you can scan over 7,000 codes and you can clear your check engine light. You can even use it like on multiple vehicles too and set up different profiles. But this is important because there are times when Something as little as a bad gas cap can cause a check engine light, and it'll have your dash lit up like a Christmas tree, man. I've had that happen. And unless you run the codes, you have no way of deciphering whether it's something simple like a gas cap, or it could be like that air injection pump failure that I just talked about previously, which is gonna cost you potentially thousands of dollars to fix. So you need to check the codes to find out what's going on, if there's any lights on in the dash. And even if there aren't any, there could be some hiding behind the scenes. You can also use the fixed sensor to track vehicle maintenance and keep an eye on things like oil changes and tire wear and just have it all bundled in one spot where you can keep an eye on, on your scheduled service. There's also a premium subscription which gives you access to a mechanic hotline and fair market prices for fixing problems so you know what it ideally kind of ballpark what it should cost to fix things. And you can even use it to predict if you're going to pass an emissions test. If your state or province still does emissions testing, you can use it for that as well and it'll kind of give you the cheat codes. You can find out if you're going to pass or fail long before you ever even bring it into the, the testing center. So if you're interested in trying this fixed sensor out, I'm going to hook you up. This thing normally retails for $59, but if you click the link in the description below, you can actually get it for $19.99. And if you're shopping for a 4Runner right now, bring it with you. Take it on every test drive, plug it into every truck, and any owner or dealership that has a problem with you doing that, hey man, we're not doing business anyways. What are you trying to hide? You know what I mean? So um, any above board seller is going to have no problem with you plugging the sensor in and just confirming that there isn't any major problems going on with the truck. Another maybe slightly less common issue is problems with the rear air suspension on these. They can have leaks in the lines or um, sometimes they'll, they'll just stop functioning. So you want to check for that. You want to cycle it through all the different settings. In this case on mine I actually got rid of the airbags in the back and just converted to coils because I had a leak on mine. But a telltale sign is if it, if it sits with a little bit of a factory rake when it's in the medium setting, that's normal. If it sits kind of level or especially with the rear end sitting a little bit sagged, you know you probably have some leaks back there. And uh, you want to keep an eye out for that. And sticky brake calipers are an issue that plagued all of these 4th Gen 4Runners. And at one point midway through they actually upgraded the brakes to try and stop the issue. And this is a facelifted model, so this is one of the newer upgraded ones, and guess what? I think I've replaced two or three frozen or stuck brake calipers already on this since I've owned it. So that's a very common problem with these things, especially if you live up here in the north where there's rust and stuff is more of an issue and corrosion. Um, so you want to check and make sure when you're driving it that it doesn't pull from side to side when you hit the brakes. Another way is just to, if it feels like compared to the other vehicles that you've driven, if it feels like it has sluggish acceleration, especially down low, like something's kind of holding it back, it's another telltale sign of a stuck brake caliper. Also check for one wheel to have more brake dust on it than the others. Now these are black wheels, it's a little hard for that to stand out, but you can even just kind of like a swipe with your finger, check and see for brake dust. And if that doesn't match on all four wheels, chances are that brake caliper is probably sticking. You may also notice a bit of a clunk from the drive shaft when you test drive it. And don't worry, that's not actually a big deal. It's just a matter of greasing up the drive shaft. It feels like it's a big problem. It feels like there's something wrong with the transmission or something. And it feels like it, every time you stop, it kind of clunks and it's almost like somebody rear ends you lately. And don't worry about that. I've already got a video on that on this channel as well, showing you just how to grease up your drive shaft. And it's, it's not a big deal, even though it might feel like there's something wrong with it. It's a very easy, simple fix. 
One more minor issue is the light bulbs in these climate control dials tend to burn out over time on these. And I also did a video on this showing how to replace them. It's super easy, it just takes a few minutes. You can just buy the bulbs from the dealership or sometimes you can even get them on Amazon. Um, very cheap and easy fix, you can do it yourself, it's no big deal. So go ahead and check out that video if you've got some bulbs burnt out. Very common, but not a problem to fix it at all. So I'm going to put links to all those videos that I just mentioned in the description below so if you want to go and, and check all those out for more information on some of these specific issues. For a few more minor issues to look out for, make sure to head over to CanadianGearhead.com and check out my 4th Gen 4Runner Buyer's Guide. It's a great resource with everything you need to know while you're shopping for one. It includes like year-by-year -year updates and differences in models and stuff like that. So it's a really good resource for you to go and check out and maybe put it in your bookmarks or something to refer back to it whenever you go to look at one. So go ahead and check that out and stay tuned for more Toyota truck content on the channel. Thanks for watching guys.